Okay, so in order to digitize a feature on a map, um, the first thing you need to do is load the grid that you want to digitize from. And very important here to use a grid and not a map. Because in some instances, you can actually by accident change the coordinates. If you're loading multiple grids, in different regions of a map. So rather just go to the original grid. So you can see on my left I've got grids. And opening up this is my geology grid. And let's assume that I want to digitize a road here. It's most likely you're going to want to digitize fault. But let's, for this example, use this road. And you can actually find this grid in on Google Drive. But you can also do the same with your grid. You don't have to use mine, as the first tip is to open a database. So go database, new database, check where it's saving it. I'm going to go into the folder that I know. I'll be able to find later or create a folder. And I'm going to create change the name of it. So something that you can find. I'm going to call it digitize. Road end. Click save. You can see it added the name there. You can leave the rest default click on it OK. The database opens up. So now I want to view my database next to my grid. So the window tile vertically. And so now I actually want to digitize this row going down. And how I do that is I go grid and image utilities. GRID profile. So literally I'm going to grid a profile along my map. It's going to give me the X and Y coordinates in the database. So I click on grid profile. You can also extract grid values. Not just X and Y, but also Z values. This isn't so important to me. But if you wanted to, you could choose at your grid to do this from. So let's, for example, say I wanted to turn the gravity. That is along this road. You can do it for multiple new line name. You can use whatever value you want. I'm just going to put zero and then sample interval is. How the distance between your stations. Facing law that is going to output you. You don't want this to be too small. Otherwise, you're going to have a very big database. But you also don't want to be um, too large, and then you've got a very jagged line. And it's in map units. So my map you can see at the bottom here is in UTM35. So I'm just going to say 1,000 meters. Probably even to small, I'm going to say 10,000. Let's see what it looks like. And then from this, pull down this chair. Make sure it does say digitize from there. Click on OK. Now it tells you enter points on the profile right. Click when done, escape to cancel. What that means is you click OK. And now I click along my line. I start the first one. You can see it joins the line. I keep on left clicking. And you can go down. And you can determine how accurate you want to be. 
Maybe you want to be a lot more accurate than what I do. There's a right click and I click on here zoom in. Don't click on anything else, or else you'll lose what you digitize already. So just straight away right click. Go zoom and it's zoom for you. You can see it's kept your digitizing line going. And I can go right. I carry on along this road and I'm going down. Super accurate. You could be a lot more accurate if you want. When I get to the bottom here, I'm still gonna right click again. Don't click on anything else, right click. Go pan that allows you to drag up if you want. And I'll keep on going. I'm just gonna go to the bottom of my map here. I get to the end and now I right click. I go done. And you can see it's actually put X and Y values of this road into the database. And it's given gravity values. The fact that nothing has shown up here makes me think. I must have clicked on the wrong bridge. Cause it should populate this with gravity values. Or maybe my gravity. Grade doesn't have the correct coordinates defined or doesn't have coordinates defined. Again, just gonna zoom out here by clicking the world map. So I've got X and Y values. And now we just need to make sure that the coordinate system is defined correctly for these X and Y values. So go coordinate, go coordinate system. It's already selected X and one. Click on Coordinate System. And we know from our math that it was in UTM35. So it's already picked that up, WJ74UTM35. Make sure yours is correct. Check OK. And now I want to plot this back on my map. To check it's correct, so I got Map Tools. Line Path is going to plot the line. This is the color of the line line thickness. Label sizes will actually label your line. I don't want this. So you can actually click on I think yeah. Label like location click on known. And it won't actually draw a label for you. You can play around with the other parameters. Click on it OK. It's tossing and I'm scared you don't have to change this. Kick it again. You can see it closes it for me on the map. And that's how you could digitize a line. So now let's for example, you want to do a second road or second fault. Instead of starting up a new database, let's just make put it in a different line. So you can see up here far. Put my mask in this blue block that is SO. I right click a little list. It's currently telling me there's only one line in the database. Well, we can make another one. So let's go grid and image utilities grid profile. And I'm going to use the same map here. But I'm going to change my line number to no. 1. I'm going to click on OK. And OK again. And I'm going to just do a very close in your ties. And you can take more time if you need to. Go on here, the one right click done OK. And what you can see here, sorry is that it's actually added S1 to your database. If I right click on top and I go to list, these are my two lines. 
And the nice thing now is that if I go map image, line profile, and I plotted, you can see both of them are plotted. And because they loaded as separate lines, in this database they're not connected. If you had loaded one in the database, and then directly underneath, the dude carried on with the data for his O. There would have been a line connecting as one is O. But now because they loaded here as separate lines, it plots them as separate lines. Now for example, say I want to see where these plot on the gravity data. So now I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to open my gravity data. This is my grid I'm going to put my mask on top of it. So now I can either plot them on here. So what that would mean is that I click on that. Line pass. OK and OK. O and plotted it think this is our problem. Something is wrong about where it is, um. And so it hasn't plotted cause there is a problem. But now is a way I could check what's wrong. Cause I'm gonna. In my left hand group manager tools here. I'm going to click on my add gravity with the grid. And I'm going to drag it onto this geology map. I'm going to release it. And now let's see where it's plotted. Cause that will give us an idea what's wrong. Then zoom out. OK and so this. This geology map doesn't exactly overlay. Where my gravity is, sorry. I thought they were in the same project. And so this is a nice way of being able to view where your different grids are. And you can see in this map, group manager tool that pays listing on gravity grid, as well as my geology grid. And so, that's allowing you to see the two grids together. And yes, yeah, so that's how you digitize some land. And you can do it for multiple faults.